Hey guys, today we're talking TV shows. So when I'm filming this, the Emmys have just happened, so I thought now is as good a time as any. I'm going to be listing my top 10 favourite TV shows that are currently still airing. So as far as I know, none of these have been cancelled at the minute. Uh, they are all currently in their airtime. Some have more seasons than others. We've got a mix here as far as sitcoms and dramas go. All of these are shows that I really enjoy watching and I look forward to new seasons being released. If I were to do a top 10 favourite shows of all time that would be completely different. A lot of my favourite shows have wrapped up, have finished filming, although some of these on this list would definitely make my favourite television list as well. But yeah, top 10 shows that are currently still in production. I haven't put these in a particular order but the first few that I'm going to be talking about are probably the ones that I'm most excited for right now. Number one on that list being The Durrells. I believe in America this is called The Durrells in Corfu and it is based on Gerald Durrell's Corfu trilogy, the first book being My Family and Other Animals. It follows a British family in the 1930s consisting of a mum, three sons and a daughter and they move from England to the Greek island of Corfu. There have been two seasons so far and a third one just finished filming and will be out I think April next year and it is just one of my favourite things ever. I read My Family and Other Animals earlier in the year. Um, I watched this and I also watched a television movie adaptation of My Family and Other Animals that was actually adapted by the same writer who is working on the Durrells, Simon Nye. Um, it's just brilliant. It is not a particularly faithful adaptation, but the spirit and the humour is just wonderful. The casting is brilliant. I love everyone in the show. It is so fantastic. I've watched both seasons multiple times now because I cannot get enough of it and this is a show that I definitely try and bully everyone in my life into watching because it is just amazing and I so very highly recommend it. Number two on my list is a Netflix original and that is The Crown. Uh, season one came out I think November of last year and season two is about to air in December. Season one is set in the 1950s and it follows Queen Elizabeth II and her early years as Queen. This is another show where the casting is amazing. It is excellent. Claire Foy as uh, Queen Elizabeth is amazing. Matt Smith as Prince Philip. John Lithgow just won the Emmy for Winston Churchill and so deservedly he is amazing in The Crown. Um, the production value of The Crown is also insane. It looks as good if not better than most feature productions. It's absolutely stunning. I cannot take my eyes away from it. Season one was incredible. I am really looking forward to season two and as far as I'm aware there is sort of a six season um, arc planned for The Crown where every two seasons they will change up the cast because it will be further in time and they will need to have aged up. So this current wonderful cast will only be for season one and two and then three and four will be an all new cast and then five and six will be an all new cast. That's what I've heard anyway which I think will actually be really interesting. I'm very excited to see who they're going to cast for the older versions of these characters. Absolutely stunning show. Definitely, definitely recommend if you haven't checked it out. It's one that really did blow me away with just how beautiful it was. Third on my list is actually Doctor Who and Doctor Who is a show very dear to my heart. I absolutely adore it um, but it's a show that I never would have given a shot if my fiance Morgan hadn't uh, asked me to watch it with him. He's been a fan since he was small. I had seen tiny bits and pieces on TV growing up and was never even remotely interested. Uh, Sci-fi isn't a go-to genre for me. To be honest I really didn't think I was gonna like the show. Uh, the bits that I had seen on TV, the production value looked rubbish, it looked really just silly and just not something that I was going to enjoy but there is something so wonderfully charming about Doctor Who. Um, I have only watched from the 2005 reboot to where it's currently up to now but I've watched those episodes multiple multiple times and I love all four of the Doctors that have existed since the reboot. For anyone wondering Eleven is my Doctor, uh, Matt Smith, and I'm someone that takes it quite hard when the Doctor changes. Um, I am always excited to see who's coming next 
but it's always hard to say goodbye to the previous one and I never thought that I could love a doctor more than David Tennant but Matt Smith completely did it for me especially re-watching those episodes I think the uh three Matt Smith seasons are just excellent but I do love Peter Capaldi the current doctor he is amazing and I'm so excited for the Christmas special and I'm very excited of course to see Jodie Whittaker as the first female doctor for me it's the humanity of the show that makes it what it is it's the relationships it's the emotion it's the characters um I absolutely love Doctor Who and I know it's controversial for some people but Stephen Moffat is by far my favorite Doctor Who writer. I adore him and I'm so sad that he's leaving the show as showrunner. I'm excited to see what Chris Chibnall is going to do when he takes over when Jodie Whittaker becomes the Doctor um, but I'm very excited for the Christmas special the last episode with Capaldi and the last episode uh, as Stephen Moffat as showrunner. I think it's going to be great and I'm very much looking forward to season 11 next year. Next on my list is a little bit of a crime drama in Grantchester and I absolutely adore this show. It is fantastic. James Norton and Robson Green, they are a little bit of a crime solving duo. Uh, James Norton's character, Sidney Chambers, is a priest and his friend Geordie is a detective inspector and together it's sort of a uh, mystery of the week, crime of the week type thing, but it's set in the 1950s in the small town of Grantchester. It is adorable. I love the characters. The stories are fantastic. The acting is wonderful. It's just a lot of fun. I think every show I've talked about so far is basically a period drama with the exception of Doctor Who, but there are um, past episodes in Doctor Who and they're always my favorite episodes. So, so clearly I have a type, but the next two shows that I'm about to talk about our current modern day shows um, set in the here and now. So another Netflix original is Grace and Frankie and it is completely wonderful. Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda are the two female leads. They are women in their 70s who have sort of been thrown together in an unlikely friendship after their husbands who were business partners came out to them as gay and told them that they'd been in love for years and that they were leaving their wives to pursue a relationship together. So that kind of leaves Grace and Frankie in quite a little bit of turmoil and suddenly their golden years aren't what they thought they were going to be. It is a hysterically funny show, really beautifully written, really beautifully acted. I think there's only been three seasons so far but it's amazing and there will be a season four next year. I absolutely adore it and it is one that I wait for that time of year when it lands on Netflix so that I can binge watch it. It is excellent. And the other contemporary show on my list is actually Younger and it is another sitcom that centers around a woman, Liza. At the beginning of the show she is 40 years old, um, recently divorced mother. When she was in her early 20s she worked in publishing before she left when she got pregnant and she's been trying to get back into that field and with no luck, there are no entry level positions for someone of her age, no one is willing to give her a shot. So after a misunderstanding at a bar where a 26 year old guy mistakes her for being around the same age as him, she decides to lie on her job applications and ends up getting employed um, as a 26 year old. It is just a sweet little show. I really enjoy the characters. It's very much a relationship heavy show. Um, all of the plot lines are relationship driven, whether or not it's romantically or platonically. The interaction between the characters are always beautiful and silly and just enjoyable. It's just a really, really fun show. It just finished airing its fourth season. Um, it has been renewed for a fifth that will be out sometime next year. It's not exactly groundbreaking television, but it is just a lot of fun and one that I really enjoy watching. Next up, we have Call the Midwife, and it is a, another British period drama, and it is set in the 50s and 60s, and it is about a group of midwives and nuns. It's set in London. It's an extremely dramatic, emotional show. There's a lot going on at all times. Pretty much every episode in existence makes me cry at some point, whether it's happy cry or sad cry. It's just a super intensely emotional show. But it's also very beautiful. There's a lot of lighthearted moments, a lot of humor in it. One that I really enjoy. I'm actually a season behind with this. I need to uh, catch up on that sometime soon, but it is excellent and I really, really recommend it. Next up is one that I think might be a little bit controversial with some of you. Um, it is Anne with an E. Uh, I think it's called Anne with an E on uh, Netflix, but I believe in Canada it's just called Anne. I know a lot of people don't like this adaptation, but while it's not 
super close to the books. I do really enjoy it. I thought it was really fun. I liked watching it. I really want to see where they take it. I found all of the characters really enjoyable even when they differed from how they were in the books. I know the 80s miniseries is most people's favourites and I watched the first one of that and it just wasn't quite for me. I do understand that it is the definitive one for most people and that's great but I thought Anne with the Knee was just really fun and enjoyable. I really like the way they took Gilbert's character even though it's quite different from the books. Um, I thought Marilla was fantastic in it. She was just so lovely. I really love the depth that they added to her character. And in general I think it's one to test out for yourself. It is definitely polarizing. Um, some people really enjoy it, some people absolutely do not. It's worth the risk of just one or two episodes though. So if you haven't tried Anne with an E, maybe give it a shot, but I know it is definitely not everyone's cup of tea. Next up we actually have another sci-fi show uh, and that is Stranger Things. This is another Netflix original. It is so much fun. It is just an excellent, excellent show. It is set in the 80s. I don't think I've ever seen a show get a period so amazingly correctly um, that's only in recent past. Most things that are set in the 80s are very over the top 80s. They're very sort of bright vivid colours and crimped hair and uh, lots of 80s music blaring like Cyndi Lauper and Pat Benatar and this is a completely different vibe. I'm an 80s baby so this is um, a lot of nostalgia for my very young childhood in there um, but it's just amazing. It's such a good show. It's set in a small town. A little boy goes missing in the first episode and it's sort of finding out what happened to him, it's his friends, it's his family. The child actors are incredible in it. Season two comes out, I think around Halloween. When I first saw that it was coming out, uh, I thought it looked interesting enough, um, but it's not something that I thought would have a lot of appeal necessarily to me. Um, it's something else that I watched with my fiance and it's just so well done that I had to include it on this list. Definitely worth checking out. Just such a brilliantly done show. Plus it has uh, Winona Ryder as the mum in it and that just adds a whole other level of nostalgia for me since I really do love Winona Ryder and I haven't seen her in much in recent years. And the last show that I am including on this list might seem like a little bit of a cheat uh, since season one hasn't even aired yet. A double episode pilot has uh, been released and it was so good that I have no choice but to talk about it. And that is the reboot of DuckTales. I grew up with the original DuckTales series. I loved it. It was a part of my childhood and I was definitely nostalgic for uh, this reboot happening and once I saw the cast I was even more excited. David Tennant is Scrooge McDuck which is just perfect. Um, the rest of the cast is fantastic as well. So I thought it was going to be a lot of fun so I was very very excited when the pilot was released uh, last month but it exceeded every single expectation I could have possibly had. The art style is gorgeous. It is based on the original comics. Um, the writing is excellent. It is so so funny. Uh, the characterization, the way they've changed the characters, modernized them but still stayed true to them, uh, all of the references to everything. It is so damn likable. I have watched that first double episode several times and the season starts for real this weekend and I am so excited. It's just such a fantastic show. It's already been renewed for a second season. Um, I really think they're going to do excellent things with this. It's very much something the people that grew up with the original show are going to enjoy it for nostalgic reasons. I think it just has mass appeal in general. Obviously kids are going to love it but I think there is definitely stuff in there for adults. As much fun as the original show was, this is already better than it tenfold. It's just an excellent well-made just labor of love. You can see how much the people working on the show really really care about it and it is absolutely one of my most anticipated shows. I think it's going to do really really well and I cannot wait to watch all of it. So that is it guys. Those are my top 10 currently airing TV shows. I recommend all of them. They are all fantastic. They are all shows that I really wait for that new episode, that new season to come out. I'm sure I've probably left something really obvious off my list that I'm going to kick myself for later. Um, if I have I will just add it in the description bar. 
But thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any TV show recommendations you would like to leave me in the comments, please feel free. If you have opinions on any of these shows, good or bad, I would love to hear those as well. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon.